Welcome to Samuel Academy. In this lesson, we shall learn about geometry and we shall cover three items in geometry that is angles, triangles, and Pythagoras theorem. The first topic we are learning about is different kinds of angles. We have the following different kinds of angles. The first angle that is formed by these two lines which intersect is an acute angle. An acute angle is an angle which is less than 90 degrees. Number two is a right angle. These two lines, this one here, is perpendicular to this one here. So they form a right angle. Right angle X is equal to 90 degrees. Three is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. It can be 110 degrees, 120 and so on. It is more than 90 degrees but it is less than 180 degrees. So an obtuse angle lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Next is a reflex angle. A reflex angle is more than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees. So X here is more than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees reflex angle. And then we have this diagram here. Line AB, this line AB and this line CD. So this line CD touches line AB and D. And the two angles are formed. Angle ADC and angle CDB. The two angles we say they are adjacent angles. ADC is adjacent to CDB. And the sum of the adjacent angles is 180 degrees. Adjacent angles here, yeah, they lie on a straight line, line AB. And the sum of angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. These angles are also called supplementary angles. They supplement one another. Okay, we have learned about adjacent angles and supplementary angles. Next is here. But we have seen that. We have seen that. So next is here about angles at a point. You can see these angles 120 degrees, 100 degrees, and 140 degrees. These three angles they are angles at a point. And the sum of the angles at a point is 360 degrees. So 120 plus 100 plus 140 gives you 360 degrees angles at a point we have got we have got that one now the next is this diagram which shows vertically opposite angles so here we have these two lines which intersect at this point and they form three angles X, P, Y, and Q. Now, in this diagram, we can see that P and Q are vertically opposite angles. Also, X and Y are vertically opposite angles. Now, we need to understand that vertically opposite angles are equal. P is equal to Q and X is equal to Y. All right. Now, in this diagram, we can also see that we have adjacent and supplementary angles like 
P and Y they are adjacent to one another and so there are supplementary angles P and Y and even Y and Q on this line we have Y and Q then we have Q and X they are also supplementary angles but remember angles on a straight line they sum up to they, are, they equal they, they sum up to 180 degrees their sum is 180 degrees angles on a straight line supplementary angles all right our next is this one here where we have two par parallel lines line pq and line st are parallel lines that are parallel to one another and then there is this line which crosses the two parallel lines is called a transversal this one is a transversal now we are going to look at the angles that are formed when, when we have a transversal and two or more parallel lines we have line we have this angle angle a this angle angle a and angle b now this angle a and angle b we say that they are alternate angles and they are equal to one another angle a is equal to angle b alternate angles are equal to one another the other angles you can discover here are corresponding angles like angle a corresponds to angle c these are corresponding angles and they are equal okay and then you can also see here we have got vertically opposite angles b and c so there are many things you can learn from this diagram concerning alternate angles corresponding angles and vertically opposite angles now let's look at a worked example concerning what you have learned about uh, angles when we have two parallel lines this and this in the transversal so the question is we are supposed to calculate the values of m and n we are given here is 57 degrees here is m here is n we are required to find the value of m and the value of n so what do we do we realize that uh, n n here is alternate angle with 57 degrees 57 degrees and n are alternate angles and we say that the two the alternate angles are equal so we can say that n is equal to 57 degrees because they are alternate angles so we now know the value of n now m how do we find m we realize that m and n they lie on a straight line they are supplementary angles and if n is 57 degrees then n how do you get it we subtract n from 180 degrees so the value of m is equal to 180 degrees subtract 57 degrees which gives us 123 degrees why because they are supplementary angles that's how we are able to solve that problem the values of m and n now we are through with angles now we can discuss about triangles this one is an equilateral triangle equilateral triangle we can also call it an equiangular triangle because all the sides the three sides are equal and all the three angles are equal and this particular case the value of this angle is 60 degrees this one is 60 this one is 60 because the sum of the angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees so if they are all equal you can divide 180 by 3 you get 60 for each of these angles so this is what we mean by 
an equilateral triangle where x is equal to y is equal to z and the sum of x plus y plus z is only the increase that is an equilateral triangle an isosceles triangle an isosceles triangle is one in which two sides are equal and the two angles are equal so in this particular case this side is equal to this side and this angle a is equal to angle b and the sum of the three angles is only the degrees so this is how an isosceles triangle can be described next is what we call a right angled triangle a right angled triangle has one of the angles equal to 90 degrees so the, the, this, um, this triangle is right angled here All right and then we have this kind of uh, triangle in which we have what we call the exterior angle like this one here the sum of n and m this is an exterior angle and m and n here are the interior opposite angles so in geometry we know that the exterior angle this one here is equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles that's a very important fact you need to note now let's do uh, let's look at this word example concerning a triangles a a b c is a triangle and the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees now here we have an exterior angle y plus 85 degrees then we have this angle here now this one we form the interior opposite angles all right we are required to find the value of x and y and these lines b a and c e are parallel to one another this is a transversal this is this is a transversal so we are given here as 55 degrees 40 degrees and we are required to find the value of x and y so we know that angle e c d is equal to is equal to a b c because they are corresponding angles if the two lines are parallel and these are transversal then this angle is equal to this one so we can get the value of this angle angle b a c angle a b c so in this case angle a b c is equal to 55 degrees if we know the angle of the, the, the value of angle a b c and we know this angle then we can get x so we just we just say x is equal to is equal to 180 degrees the sum of the angles in a triangle subtract these two angles 55 plus 40 so 180 minus this sum which is which is 95 you get 85 degrees so the value of x here is 85 degrees so we have used this principle the sum of angles in a triangle the value of y why is this one here we can get it from here because these three angles lie on a straight line these three angles 40 degrees y and 55 degrees they lie on a straight line so you can get the value of y from here so we say 180 degrees minus this sum 40 plus y plus 85 so to get y we say 180 degrees minus what do we know 4 degrees plus 85 will give you the value of y so 180 degrees minus 95 Get 85. So the value of y 
is 85 degrees and it is also equal to the value of x which we call that as 85 because this one here and this one here are alternate angles because these are this line and this line are parallel these are transversal so y is equal to x so if x was 85 degrees then y must be 85 degrees that's how we can get the value of x and y in that diagram now next is a theorem called Pythagoras theorem which involves a right angle triangle we have this triangle ABC right angle at B and it has sides A side A side B side C now this long side is called the hypotenuse B is the hypotenuse then we have these other sides A and C now Pythagoras theorem states that the square of the longest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, b squared, b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared. That is Pythagoras theorem, which is very useful in mathematics. Okay, let's see how you can apply what you have learned somewhat example this one is this one is a wall which whose height is not known and there's a ladder here which is inclined against the wall and the foot of this ladder is three meters away from the wall and this ladder is five meters in length so you are required to find the height of the wall. How do you go about it? We apply Pythagoras theory, which says that the longest side, the hypotenuse here, 5 meters squared, is equal to 3 meters squared plus the height of the wall squared. So let's see how it is worked out. Now, the height of the wall, let the height of the wall x they are known then from pythagoras from pythagoras theorem we find that the ladder the, the length of the ladder squared is equal to the distance of the ladder away from the wall the distance that the foot of the ladder is away from the wall squared plus the height of the wall squared that is 5 squared is equal to 3 squared plus x squared so 5 squared is 25 3 squared is 9 and we are, we are supposed to get x so 25 is equal to 9 plus x squared so 25 minus 9 is 16 this what we do we add 9 we, we, we subtract 9 from both sides so 9 minus 9 here and 25 minus 9, you get 16, then you get here it is x squared. So 16 is x squared. To get the value of x, we find the square root on both sides. The square root of x is x. The square root of 16 is 4. So the value of x is 4. So that means that the height of the wall is actually 4 meters. So that's how we are able to determine the height of the wall using Pythagoras theorem. I hope you have got some idea. Kindly subscribe to this channel to see more videos.